Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today we are headed out on another adventure. We're going out to camp overnight with the new haversack loadout. I did add a couple of things and uh, put a little extra food in there for supper tonight. So let's see how it works out. Stay tuned. We're just driving down the road. It is a beautiful afternoon. The highs were up around 50 today, but it's supposed to get down around 25 tonight, which I checked it out. That's about, oh, I don't know, negative, negative 4 Celsius, I believe. So, all right, just headed out into the wilderness. All right, so here we are. We're at the parking area, and it's just really beautiful here. A little creek over to the side and I'll give you a shot of that here in a minute. But, uh, we've got the haversack. Go ahead and get it out. And so additions to it, I have put a wool blanket on here and then also where the axe sleeve is, I have attached a belt and uh, that's just going to help me carry it a little more effectively. Uh, the reason that I did that is, first of all, when you carry a haversack, a lot of times they like to sling around and slide from side to side on your back. So having some kind of a belt around your waist will help keep that from happening. And the reason that I like the haversack idea is that it really limits how much you can carry. Uh, sure, you could put it in a knapsack, you could put it in a backpack, uh, a rucksack, and those are great options. But when you have something that is this size, and even though I've got a couple of pouches on the side, and uh, for those of you who are interested in uh, watching the video, I can put a link to it over here, and that's the haversack loadout. But uh, anyway, a couple of changes, not a whole lot, just a couple of things, put a little more food in here, and uh, of course the, the wool blanket, and then also I did put a space blanket in there as well and I took the little uh, titanium stove out because I plan to camp and uh, cook over a uh, campfire tonight so and here's a couple of dogs from neighboring house come over to check me out they seem like they're pretty friendly so <laughs> and then over here the beautiful creek and then on down through the trail they've got the old road closed off there with a the gate but we're going to be heading that direction. And uh, yeah, there's the haversack and the tripod and my new friends. <laughs> and we're off. Just walking down the trail and see over there where the creek widens out. Just a beautiful, beautiful time of the year. First real full day of spring. Might be the second full day, but it doesn't matter. Just a great day to be out and about out in the eastern woodlands and just enjoying all the beauty of creation. Still have a couple hours before sundown. Should have plenty of time to stop and make camp. You can see the little decent amount of water here. A little inlet over on the other side and over on the other direction. Just really pretty. I really like this part of Ohio.
So we're high atop a bluff here. Looking down, you can see the river. Goes on out around that way. And then gonna be camping somewhere off in that direction. A lot of nice open spots, large trees, and uh, plenty of firewood. Well, I was going to camp up along the ridge there, some really nice flat spots, but being spring and it's so windy and uh, we've had problems with the emerald ash borer in this part of the country and there's a lot of dead trees up to the, a lot of large dead trees. So I didn't want to get stuck between any, or underneath any widow makers. Anyway, I found a nice spot here. There's a tree here, one there, some dead standing timber, got some dead stuff laying around and, <coughs> excuse me, as you can see, there's plenty of firewood, so that's not going to be an issue, and uh, I guess we'll go ahead and start putting up camp. First of all, I'm going to clear out some of this dead wood laying around and make a good spot. It's so wet in here, uh, there's, there's no danger of starting any kind of a forest fire. Of course, I'll make sure it's out well in the morning, but uh, this should be a pretty good place, fairly protected, and uh, we're not... Uh, we're not clear down at the bottom, we're not clear at the top, somewhere in the middle at a nice level area. And of course we want to keep this stuff close because this is uh, it's pretty dry. Some of this stuff is pretty good too. Most of what's on the ground is pretty damp, but... I think we'll get the saw after that one here in a little bit. Take the haversack off. And I'm going to take off outer layer here. I uh, get a little hot, so I'll lay this down and I might even take this off. I'm wearing four layers. I've got a, a base layer on, and then a, a partly wool shirt, and then just a soft shell. So, last is a waterproof uh, Carhartt jacket. Additional things that I put in the kit, I have some uh, rice and some chicken for supper tonight, a little bit of olive oil, and then I also added the emergency blanket, just in case I get cold, I need to reflect a little heat back onto myself. For sleeping tonight, I have the Grand Trunk Nano, and I think you see that right there. So uh, this is a very small hammock, and along with that I've added these uh, Helios straps uh, made by Helios, of course, uh, uses a, a what's called a Dyneema line. It's really strong. Each one of these straps is rated uh, for 150 pounds, so together they'll hold 300 pounds of weight. And I think the Nano is rated for, if I'm not mistaken, 250 pounds, something like that. But it should hold me. So we'll go ahead and put that up. And uh, this has a really unique fastening system in which the, the cable is woven inside of itself and when it puts tension on it, that's what uh, holds it together. So it's a pretty pretty slick setup. So to use this tree strap, it's pretty much like any other tree strap. Uh, it just goes around the tree. I like to start about chest height and then uh, just feeds through the loop. Like that. 
And of course the reason we use tree straps instead of ropes is because the tree strap is much gentler on the tree. Uh, I have actually seen where when you use a, just a, a, ram, a, a rope for your hammock or a uh, heavy cord of some kind, it can actually leave a, a ring, almost girdle the tree. It could probably kill it. And then on this, it has a, a little tag that says, connect hammock here. So all you do is take your pretty carabiner here, <laughs> came with it. And just slide it through there and that's how you make your adjustments by by pulling on the cord here I put the other side up so one of the things that I did before I went ahead and finished stretching out the hammock is that one standing piece of dead timber I went ahead and cut it down because it's always hard to tell which way they fall I want to make sure it didn't fall on my hammock uh, once I get it set up Again, to give you an idea of how this works, it just hooks into a loop and then it's just woven in. And so to tighten it, you literally just pull and slide and that adjusts your tension and that'll hold 150 pounds. It's pretty amazing. And of course over here then, you can see that the line, it's actually, it's actually the two lines. That's where they're woven in together. Very, very clever system. Very lightweight too. So it's not supposed to rain tonight, but again, you never know what happens sometimes with the weather. But for my shelter, I'm going to be using this tarp poncho, and made by Sea to Summit. It's very lightweight and uh, very easy to pack. That's why I carry it in the haversack kit. So let's go ahead and get that stretched out. Just whittling some stakes here to stake down the tarp, and I'm using a knife made in Russia, uh, made by Kazilyar Supreme, you can see perhaps right there, and uh, it's D2 steel, it's got a great balance, comes with a nice sheath, and uh, so far I like it quite well, just, uh, just testing it, and uh, this is the second trip I've used it on, and so far it's still razor sharp, of course D2 when it's treated right is an excellent steel. Just uh, wheeling this down, and then of course got to put a crown on it. If you know anything about carving steaks, you know that if you don't crown the other end, when you go to pound it in, it will uh, often just smash on you. But you do it this way, and uh, put a little, put a little crown on it like that, and uh, that'll help it not splitter, splinter out on you when you go to hammer it in. All right, so you can see we got the. Hammock up now, of course, and the rain fly over top of it, the poncho tarp, and it looks pretty good. So what I normally do when it's not raining, uh, I will just take this first stake out of the ground, it's just, the ground's real moist, and I'll just put it over top, like this. And that gives me a little bit of a way to lay and feel the fire, of course, you don't want it real close to your tarp. But uh, I'm going to put it right here. I cleared out a spot. And we're going to go ahead and start getting some firewood together. And working on uh, getting things going. I only have one quart of water with me tonight. So I do need to find more water. I know there is plenty in the area. I can always go over the bluff in that direction and get some more. But I want to make sure that I get everything else set up in camp before we go to that. I've still got about an hour and a half of, of light before it gets totally dark and probably a good 45 minutes to an hour of pretty decent light. So uh, plenty of time to get camp uh, finished up and 
and uh, get a good fire started for uh, supper tonight. I tell you, I just love the Gomboy 240. I mean, it just cuts through this wrist size stuff in no time flat. Alright, well that's pretty good about a wood for right now. And there's plenty more wood around here. I'll probably drag in some more stuff just in case, but a lot of dead trees, a lot of things have fallen down. There's a lot of things already broken that I don't even have to cut. So, so we got quite a bit of firewood here. And then over there, I've got a, another large pile of logs, small stuff that I drug up. Now I've got to go see if I can find some water somewhere. Uh, like I said, I've got a quart, but if I can fill this up, that'll give me enough to put in with my supper tonight so I don't have to use my drinking water. So, there's a lot of places where it's overflowed, but I'm trying to find something that's relatively clean. And uh, I do know that I'm close to the lake over in that direction. And of course, down over the rise is Large Creek. So, we may just have to walk for it. So this is where the trail is, and we've got the slope here, and then way down, I mean this is a really, really steep hill. Got plenty of water down there, you can hear it running, but I uh, really don't want to climb down that slope. I mean it is extremely steep, so it doesn't look like it on camera, but it is. So we're going to head on down the trail, see what we can see. Alright, well the sun is definitely going down over there behind my head, but uh, there's the beginnings of the lake and uh, a stream that runs out through there. So I'm going to try to work my way over and see if I can't fill my water pot here, uh, cook pot, with enough water to uh, do supper tonight. So down in the bottoms here, and this area where we are is sometimes flooded by the lake. As a matter of fact, I found a little bobber. Of course, in a survival situation, this would be a great find. So, yeah, this whole area here, I've got to be careful I don't step into something marshy. Uh, that's another reason why it's important to wear waterproof boots when you're out doing things like this. So I prefer the 8-inch high uh, Gore-Tex boots. So here's a nice shot of the creek, and I'm going to go over in there through that sand and see if I can't access the flowing water over in that area. Still got a pretty good uh, bluff here though, so I'm going to have to go way around. Very slippery. Wow. All right, finally down here in the sand. Well, that water looks good. Let's go get some. Actually, it's, uh, it's pretty clear, you can see that. 
All right, we'll put the lid on here. There we go. Hopefully, that'll keep us from spilling a lot of it on the way out. So walking through this field here, there is a whole lot of this sed grass. And uh, this, of course, makes great bedding. But it's also really good for fire making. And uh, you can pretty much just grab it and twist it like that at the bottom. There's another bit of it right here. And uh, it uh, just really makes a great fire starter uh, for flint and steel. And what's nice is you've got these thick stems here all the way up to the thin feathery stuff. And so what I like to do it is I like to fold it like that and then again and then again and then the little ones in. So what you've got is you've got your fine feathery stuff in the middle and your thicker coarser stuff on the outside. And so you can very easily take and make that into a bird's nest, drop a piece of, of tinder in there or a little bit of char cloth and you have a great fire. So I'm going to put this in my pocket and take this back to camp. That's another nice thing about wearing pants with cargo pockets. You have plenty of room for storing extra things that you might find along the way. There we go. Safe and secure. Well, we made it back to camp and uh, have about that much water, which is fine. And because I'm definitely going to have to boil it some and then put the food in it. But uh, all right, it's time to get a fire started. Let's get with it. So for our fire starting tonight, we brought our little Maxpedition Waypoint Survival Fire Kit. And uh, I showed you this in the video, but this is what's inside of it. And I may take some time to go through that at some point. But uh, anyway, we've got our fat wood sticks and we've got the fat rope stick here, of course, which is just the awesome fire starter that I demonstrated in another video. And I can put a link to that up here. But uh, anyway, we also have our wonderful sedge grass or little blue stem grass as it is it grows around here so we're gonna put that down use a ferro rod get our fire going just gonna put out a small platform of sticks nothing too fancy but of course the ground is somewhat damp so we want to try and keep as much of that off of our uh, little wood as much as we can of course our fine little friend here, a little bird's nest. All right, and we've got our little bundle of smalls right here next to it. So let's see if we can, if we can get this going. I'm also going to use just a little bit of fat wood. Uh, I like to sliver it down, as you know, and just use little pieces of it. I find that that helps to get the fire going just about quicker than anything and it's just a good little skill to know and uh, just some simple batoning and I, I, when I say slivers I, I literally mean little slivers of wood uh, you don't really have to use great big pieces of fat wood to get your fire started so I actually will use pieces about this big just little tiny slivers of the stick. You don't have to use the whole stick. All right. Let's do this. Hopefully this grass is dry enough. Yeah, we got a little bit of flame. Don't take. Maybe not. Oh yeah, there we go. Didn't take too terribly much. Put our fat wood in here, crisscross a little bit, get it going. Put our smalls down on top.
And just like that, we have fire. All right. Of course, I've got the other stages of my wood laid out. A lot of this stuff is really, really dry. So it's, it was dry standing. So all I have to do is load it on there and uh, it'll burn. All right, looking good and feeling great. And we're just going to keep building it. We get some strength and we can put some of those big logs on there. And we get a good bed of coals and we can do some cooking. So I took that one piece of fat wood and I split it up. And it was originally about that big. And I split a little splinter off of it, just a tiny splinter, and then split it several more times. And what that means is, is I've got quite a bit of fat wood now for, oh, I could probably make 20 fires with that much fat wood, easily. And I haven't even gotten into my other resources. So, really, really great thing to know and be able to use. And I'm really liking my kit. So we got the fire going good. And uh, like I told you, there's a lot of great big chunks that have broken off the trees. I mean, some of these are absolutely just massively huge. I mean, way bigger around, much bigger around rather than even my leg or waist. Great big, huge logs. So I've got them in a kind of a horseshoe shape here. It makes a nice little reflector place for my fire to keep everything from spreading out. So it's looking pretty good. So this is my view right now. Just uh, sitting here watching nature's entertainment. Just the pot on the fire there, boiling up. I got some very large logs, broke off. And each side there. And I'm sitting here in the hammock. My light is a Petzl Zipka, and it has a feature where once the light goes off, it has a glowing center. So you can always see uh, where your headlamp is at night. So I didn't bring any extra lights, so I'm not gonna be able to film a whole lot of myself tonight. I might be able to see if I can strap the headlamp to something. I don't know if I can, see if I can get this off here. I guess we can always do it like that. So, yeah, didn't bring any other lights. So this is what we got. And uh, the camera isn't really good in low light. One of these days I'll get a better camera. But uh, for right now, just waiting for the water to boil and uh, gonna make some great stew tonight. I have some uh, chicken and rice along with some actual uh, chicken chunks to put in with it. So. So I got the headlamp kind of stuck onto the camera tripod. What I have for supper is I've got some of this uh, rice and I always cut the little instructions out and keep it with it. Here's the packet. It's got the spices in it. And then in this other bag here, I have some chicken, some premium chunk chicken, white chicken. And then also, Olive oil, of course, you've seen that little bottle. And then I have a couple of these Kool-Aid singles, which I really, really like. I uh, don't need all the sugar for sure, but uh, when you're out in the woods, the extra carbs and you're cutting firewood using it, sure tastes good. So we're gonna mix our stuff up here and have supper. The fire is blazing very well. And we got the chicken stew on. Doing pretty good. Just got it simmering there. It's supposed to simmer. You can see the steam coming off of it. It said 25 to 30 minutes. So we'll give it its time and let it do its thing. Well, I believe that our stew has simmered long enough. Go ahead and put my glove on here. 
pull it away from the fire. Yeah, let's see here. Okay. Oh, the handles are fairly cool. Set the lid there, that log, and let's sit here. Got to get my spoon. That looks pretty good, and I believe it's nicely done. That's what it looks like. So, pretty tasty. Chicken and rice. And now it's time to eat. It's amazing how much better things taste outside. I'm really hungry and I'm really looking forward to eating this. A little hot still. So if you're wondering, I'm actually sitting on the hammock and the fire's in front of me and I've got my headlamp strapped to the uh, base of the tripod. Mm. Like all really good food, it's worth waiting for. Well, I'm going to go ahead and finish this meal and uh, get things ready and turn in for the night. I'll give you one last look at the fire. It's looking really, really good. Really excited to have such a good fire and so much firewood. I uh, feel very, very blessed tonight. It's a great camp spot. Good night, everybody. Well, good morning. So this is where I spent the night by the fire. It was much too cold to sleep in the hammock without a, a ground mat or a mattress of some kind, something to insulate and have any under quilt. And uh, also, it was quite windy and uh, the wind kept blowing up underneath. So I ended up just uh, laying here by the fire last night and uh, got up every, oh, I would say every hour and tended the fire. So that's kind of how it is when you sleep out like this. It's pretty cold. Uh, don't know the exact temperature right now, but uh, fire feels good. And uh, had used up quite a bit of firewood last night. But anyway, it is a crisp, cool morning. And uh, just time to get around and clean up and Maybe get some hot chocolate on. Sounds good. Get back with you in a little bit. So, give you a little better idea how I slept last night. Use the haversack for a pillow. Had the emergency blanket, this green here, this is the two-sided. I just got it folded uh, double to give extra insulation. And just rolled up in the wool blanket and uh, had these logs here kind of cupping the fire and helped direct the heat toward me and about a you know about a good step away from the fire yeah i didn't get to use the hammock and such last night uh, it was set up and would have been a, a good option but like i said it was just too cold woke up was frosty this morning and uh, you can see frost on different things so definitely got down below freezing and uh, probably did hit that 25 degree minus 4 Celsius that we're talking about.
Well, I had to wash the dishes and get some fresh water for that hot chocolate if I want any. Here it is. Go back and boil it. And now we've got our water boiled. And open up our little container here that we carry in the haversack. A couple of packets of hot chocolate. Are you with me? I like coffee, I like hot tea as well. But uh, for most survival purposes, I prefer hot chocolate because both coffee and tea are diuretics. And uh, it's good to not have to go all the time when you're out in the woods. You know, I'll tell you, there's nothing like boiled creek water <laughs> and hot chocolate on a chilly morning. Still really hot though, so I have to wait a little while before I can drink it. Along with that, I've got a little bit of beef jerky and some trail mix for breakfast. So, just let all this cool and as soon as we're able to drink it, we'll have breakfast and then we'll pack up and hit the road. Well, the hot chocolate has cooled off enough uh, to be able to drink it, so I'm going to sit in the hammock and enjoy it. already had the trail mix starting in on the beef jerky. Uh. Well, now that hits a spot on a cold morning, that's for sure. It's a little bit of an odd combination, hot chocolate and beef jerky, but it really doesn't taste bad together. It's a very nice morning. Now it's time to clean up camp and hit the road. That's a pretty compact hammock and rain fly setup. Pretty impressed with this.
All right, we are ready to go. All packed up, fire's put out. Just a little bit of steam coming up from all the water I dumped on it. Managed to find some water and little pools in some of the drainage areas around here. So, boy, it's been a great camp out. Really enjoyed it. And uh, I'm gonna have to do this one again. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. Please like, share, and make sure to push the subscribe button. Also check out the links in the description box below. And don't forget to press the bell button to stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time. Gotta come back for the camera. Always have to come back for the camera. Gotta come back for the camera. Can't leave you guys behind.